Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm very excited to have Jeremy Puglisi back on the channel. You guys might recognize him. He's done tours with us before. He's also with the RV Atlas and an author of many RV related books. Today he's going to give us a full tour of an Ember travel trailer. So join us. Patrick, it's so great to be back on the show. I did one tour with you before, and it's really exciting to be back here giving you a tour of my new Ember Overland 191 MDB. Uh, I'm super excited as well because Ember is a new manufacturer. They're about a year old. They made their product debuts this fall, and they're really shaking things up with some really buzzworthy products, and they're really trying to build off-road, off-grid adventure trailers, and I personally think they're knocking it out of the park. I also want to disclose I'm a brand ambassador. I do some work with the company, uh, but I do own this trailer. I did purchase this. This is mine. I've been camping in it. I love it. And I want to show you all the things about it that are really unique and different. The floor plan is kind of a conventional RV floor plan that you'll see in other travel trailers. But beyond that, this is a complete departure from convention. This has so many, so many unique uh, features and I want to show you all of them. And uh, if we can, maybe we'll start at the front where we hitch up. So I wanted to start and give you some basic specs. It's 22 feet 6 inches long. The GVWR is right about 5,500 pounds and I am towing it with an F-250 which is over towing. Um, you could easily tow this with, with a half ton. I still have my F-250 from my last two RVs which were, which were much heavier. You could also maybe do like a mid-sized pickup truck like a Colorado or a Tacoma or something like that as well. Maybe a couple of really well equipped larger SUVs. So the unique features really start up at the front and there's so many cool things to talk about with this rig. So we have the, the front gearbox and on this side over here we have two 20 pound propane tanks, which is really nice to have too. And again, you have to remember that everything um, is being built to go off road, to boondock, to stay uh, off grid a little bit. So having two 20 pound tanks is really, really super nice up here. You can actually stand on this. I'm a big guy and I can stand on this. I could stand on this and get up and clean the window. I love the laser cut logo. And on this side, you have lots of storage if you have lithium ion or AGM batteries. If you have lithium ion or AGM batteries, those are gonna go inside. So if you have lead acid batteries though, they're gonna to need to go in here so that they are vented. And you could see there's a place back here that would vent those lead acid batteries. I'm still kind of figuring out how I'm gonna use this storage. And it is a Murphy bed unit, so you don't have full pass-through storage here, which we can look at in a second. So I'm gonna utilize this. I'm still figuring it out because this is only my second trip out in the rig. Now up here we have what Ember calls the Versa coupler. So this is adjustable, which makes it really easy to get hitched up nice and level with your tow vehicle. It also can be fully removed so that you could put an articulating hitch here if you really wanted to go off road and go off grid. Now I'm using a fast way adjustable hitch on my F-250. This is also adjustable, so it was just super easy to get my tow vehicle and the RV very, very level. You're also uh, probably noticing that there is no jack here. There's no arm here, right? Which you'd see on most RVs. So this is called a flat jack, and it allows you to put your tailgate down. So my F-250's tailgate can drop down. I can step up here and step into the back of my truck. I, I absolutely adore that feature of this. And it is an electric jack but everything's underneath and it's controlled right here. So those features make this a very unique unit right here at the front, just hitching up. You can see they're doing some really, really different things. And everything is very intentionally designed with that idea of boondocking or going off-road or off-grid. And then the next thing that we wanna talk about is the exoskeleton. This is actually my single favorite feature on this RV, believe it or not. So the exoskeleton's made of aluminum and it provides a stronger structure to, from the sidewalls to the front wall to the roof. It bonds them all together. 
So it, it really, really helps tie everything together very tightly because they want you to be able to take this rig on some bouncy roads. I also love that beyond um, serving that function of, of tying the rig tightly together, that structural function, I also love the laser cut logo. It just provides this really classic dash of style to me that reminds me of like a mid 1950s Cadillac or something like that. So it's form and function all wrapped together in that exoskeleton. And the sun does really cool things in that laser cut logo. So you get a shadow from it on the, this side up here, and then the sun will shine through the logo up there, which is really, really cool. So the exoskeleton is something that I have never seen on an RV before. Like I think this is something completely unique to Ember. I think you will start seeing this on other RVs, and I think this will be copied, uh, but this is something unique to the company, and it's just one of at least a dozen or 15 things that Ember is doing that nobody else is doing right now. But also, something that blows me away about this RV that makes this really totally different than any other travel trailer on the marketplace that I can think about is this is five-sided composite construction. There is almost no wood in this RV. The only place there is wood in this RV is in some of the cabinetry inside. So I've been around RVs and travel trailers for the last 12 years. It is very unique and unusual to get a five-sided composite construction. Then there's Asdel on either side of that aluminum, and then there's the fiberglass on either side of that. Also, there's a composite floor inside this RV. It's the same floor that Airstream uses. It's called Transcore. It doesn't squeak. And then what, what that all adds up to is like you have aluminum on five sides, you have a composite floor, you're not going to get water damage in this rig. I mean, RV owners know that water is the enemy, and they're basically taking that out of the equation here. So this is a Murphy bed model. So you'll see the Murphy bed is in here. The Truma Combi is right behind this, and we'll talk about that in a second. But you're looking at the Nautilus system here, which is basically all your controls for operating the water in this RV and the tanks. This is something you would see uh, more often on a high-end fifth wheel, not really a 22-foot uh, adventure-ready kind of travel trailer. I had the Nautilus on my last RV. I love having it here. It just makes everything easy. So you can winterize the combi right here. You have an outdoor shower here with hot and cold water. You have a black tank flush. Uh, you would pull your black tank here, pull your gray tank there. You would do your winterization right here. You would sanitize the freshwater tank right here. And I love that it has the diagram. So if you're dry camping, you want it that way. If you're filling the tanks, you want it like that. Right now we're plugged into water. We're at a um, county park that has a water hookup. So I'm on the city water setting and I have water flowing through the system here. Um, another thing I really love about the design here, and it's not really a big feature, but it's something that um, says a lot about this company. You're gonna notice that they actually dropped this little floor in here below the floor of the RV. Because Ember realized that this gets water in here. Okay, you're messing around with water, you're winterizing, you're spilling this, you're spilling that. So they actually just took this, this floor here and dropped it a little bit so it's below the surface of your composite floor. Just a, a thoughtful little touch. People aren't even gonna notice that's there, but they took notice of it. So my feeling is that like they really have gone through every inch of this rig trying to make improvements. So in here, uh, the battery disconnect. It also comes standard with um, a Lippert TPMS, which you would hook up here. And I've been so busy, I haven't even gotten that hooked up yet. And you don't have full pass-through storage, but you have a decent amount of storage. You somewhat get that, you know, it's compensated somewhat by this front gearbox. Also comes with the shower hose. And on the other side as well, you could hook up the outdoor shower and use that. The Truma Combi vents here. The Truma Combi is a combined furnace and water heater. It's highly efficient. Uh, it is incredibly well made. It is bulletproof. The warranty rate on the Truma Combi is super, super low. And it doesn't waste a lot of heat. So when you put your hand up to this, when it's on, you don't feel a lot of hot air coming out because it's using that hot air efficiently. So on a less efficient heater, you're gonna feel hot air blasting out of this, right? But the combi, you can kind of barely feel that it's on. So super, super efficient. Love that Truma combi. It weighs a lot less. It combines the, um, the hot water and the furnace into one unit, and it all goes right under the Murphy bed couch in here. So you get more cargo carrying capacity and you just have more room inside the rig. You don't have two different appliances. So this comes standard with the Truma Combi Eco Plus, and you can use purely use propane, 
you can purely use electric, or it has mixed modes, so you can combine the two. So if you were dry camping, you could just purely use the propane, um, which would make sense because you're not going to be able to plug into electric. But I'm actually here at a county park that has electric, so I could just purely run off the electric, but I have it in mixed mode because I think that works the best. So the next thing I want to show you is that we have manual stabilizer jacks on here. They went with manual jacks because they felt they were a bit more rugged for the off-road crowd. And you're also going to notice that we have beautiful dual pane windows here that open up and they open really, really nicely. And those dual pane windows are all around the coach. So now let's go around to the awning side of the coach and there's some really incredible things to show you over there as well. But let's also just stop for a second and notice this beautiful stargazer skylight. That is definitely one of the two or three most buzzworthy features that people are talking about about this ember. And you can see I have that open as opened as it will go and it also has day and night shades. It is absolutely one of the coolest things about this rig. We'll see more of it when we, when we go inside. So let's go to the front storage compartment. And if you're a seasoned RV person, you'll notice this drops down. On almost every RV, I think on every single RV I can think of, the storage compartment doors will open up. The idea by the uh, Ember design team was to create little tables that you can use for your gear or for setting up on the other side to kind of make your camp kitchen larger. Some people have looked at these and said, well, those are gonna leak. Uh, I have been camping in the rain here at Turkey Swamp Park and there is absolutely no leaking here. So I love that this becomes a little sort of workstation. I think that's very, very cool. So again, the Murphy bed is in here. The inverter is right behind this. You have your battery monitor, which is monitoring our solar. And I can talk about the solar right now if we want to. So I have the Max Solar Package. The Max Solar Package from Ember is getting a lot of buzz. So the Max Solar is an additional price, but you get three 190 watt panels, you get two lithium ion batteries, and you get a 3000 watt inverter. Okay, and that inverter is right behind here. Now the really amazing thing about Ember's Max Solar Package is that everything in this rig is inverted. Every 110 outlet works on the Max Solar. The air conditioning works on the Max Solar. The microwave works on the Max Solar. I'm unplugged right now. When we go inside, I'm gonna turn the air conditioning on for you. Now, if you get the standard solar from Ember, that comes with no batteries, okay? You're gonna work out what batteries you get with your dealer. It comes with one 190 watt panel, and it comes with um, a 1000 watt inverter. Everything is still inverted, except for the microwave and the air conditioning on standard solar. A lot of people buying these are going max solar, okay, with those two lithium ion batteries, the three 190s, and the 3000 watt inverter. You can then go max max solar. You can buy two more Battleborn lithium ion batteries from Ember and have a total of four, which are all stored in here in front of the inverter. And that's just gonna give you more battery life, more time to use that air conditioner, more time to stay off grid. So one more thing here that I, I wanna mention before we move on to one of the most buzzworthy features is that the lights are on a motion detecting sensor so they turn on and off automatically. Now heading over here to the entryway, nothing groundbreaking here, but the Lippard solid steps are awesome. Um, you used to see these more on luxury coaches, on fifth wheels. It's not totally normal to see them on a 22 foot sort of adventure rig like this, uh, but I love these steps partly because my dog Maggie's getting older and she has a really, really easy time getting up on these steps. They fold up all the way, just like that. And it's sandy and dirty here at Turkey Swap, so I would want to knock the sand off a little bit before I put that into the coach. So I love these steps. Moving along, you have another spray port. Okay, so you could, you know, rinse off your surfboards here or whatever it might be. You have two 110 outlets, and we are not plugged in right now, and uh, those are inverted. Now moving over here, Goodyear Wrangler tires, and one of the two or three most buzzworthy features here is you have a Kurt trailing arm independent suspension. So there is no axle. This is not a single axle trailer, okay? This is a zero axle trailer. It's a true independent suspension. It tows like a dream. So I've towed this RV out to Indiana Dunes National Park. I've towed it to Assateague National Seashore, and I've towed it all over New Jersey. The independent suspension does not seem to sway. It seems to constantly be self-correcting. 
and it just locks in tight and provides a really, really nice towing experience on the highway. Even Ember's delivery drivers are talking a lot about how nicely this tows, and of course it makes it more rugged and off-road ready to have that Kurt independent suspension. So if you want to get off the beaten track, this is definitely a trailer you want to consider. Now next to the independent suspension, another really cool feature that as far as I know only Ember has is this parking brake. Okay, the sticker actually calls it a wheel chock. So wheel chock slash parking brake. Now to some degree, you don't need traditional chocks anymore with this, okay? Because this is gonna lock the tire into place. So right now I have the tire locked into place. The RV does not bounce inside either when you're walking around. So that's another cool aspect of it. But it's easy to deploy and to put back into place. So you just push it in here and then you're ready to hit the road. One thing I would say is when you put it back into place to make sure it's pressing firmly against the tire so that it's actually doing the job that it's intended to do. Now, I'm on a very level campsite. I did not use my chocks on this trip. If I was hitching or unhitching on sort of an unlevel campsite, I still do have my chocks with me just to be really, really safe and secure. So now we can look at the outdoor kitchen. But first, we have a place to store our sewer hose. Now I have a 10 foot sewer hose in there. I think I can get a 15 foot sewer hose into that storage, but I haven't tried yet. You have your propane quick connect, so you could, you know, plug in your Weber Q1200 or the griddle that comes with this. I think the griddle is actually an option. So there's a three burner griddle here, which pulls out easily, which I haven't seasoned yet a nice storage tray, a nice light, two 110 outlets. This is not a 12 volt fridge, but it's inverted. So it's not on right now, but it could be working right now, even though I'm not plugged in. And again, you have this drop down storage compartment door, which creates a huge prep space when you're cooking. I think this is brilliant. It's just a simple little change from what uh, is normally done in Elkhart, Indiana, but I love having this as a table space. You have a 14 foot electric awning. So it covers most of the body of the coach, provides a nice space for rainy days, etc., etc. And there's the awning light there, the LED strip light. I, one thing I love about that is it's adjustable. Now a lot of RVs are getting really bright these days. A lot of people at campgrounds are complaining that RVs are getting too bright and it's ruining the natural experience. Patrick, we were talking before you hit record about how this is a very dark campground and we both like that. So this is fully adjustable and the designers did this in a really intelligent way. You don't even have to go into the coach to adjust it. You can just reach in right there and turn it off or back on. This isn't a bright gaudy coach by any stretch of the imagination, but I like that you have that control of that on and light. So let's go around the back. Another one of my favorite features. I love this Lippert telescoping ladder. Uh, when you fully bring it down, it goes to about my waist. And there's a ladder bracket here. And there's another ladder bracket, which is fantastic. So you can easily move this ladder around to the second ladder bracket. And pop it in right there. Now, the first time I saw this, I thought, oh, that's so cool because I can check the top of my slide out for branches. If I don't have a slide topper because you never want to bring your slide out in if there's branches on it. But what I've realized now after camping two times is this is where I like the ladder because when I climb up, I have space on this side and space on that side. Uh, so it's just easier for me to climb onto, onto the roof. When I'm using the other ladder bracket, it's sort of over in the corner. So just another little smart design feature with this Lippert ladder. I'm also a big guy and I feel completely safe. This is a completely safe and sturdy ladder. So this is where I like to have it. Uh, we have a 30 amp hookup, right? So this is a 30 amp coach. And if you'll notice, I unplugged it because I want to go inside and show you that everything works and that the air conditioning even works. So we're purely running off the, the solar right now. Also just notice that the exoskeleton that we talked about in the front comes all the way around to the back of the coach, all the way down to the bottom here. Got a full size spare. Full size spare is important for off-roading because you could get a flat tire. It's prepped for the Furion backup camera. 
Uh, I actually have the Furion backup camera. I haven't installed it yet, but I'm going to. And you have a rear cargo door. So if you want to bring SUPs, surfboards, or bikes, this rear cargo door is great. When we go inside, I'll show you that this bed flips up. And then you could put in a 10-foot canoe, maybe a 12-foot canoe. We've had SUPs in here. Or you could put bicycles in there. Folding e-bikes would work. And there's a receiver back here, rated for 300 pounds. So um, my wife and I have e-bikes now. I think they weigh about 60 pounds each. So I'm going to get a rack system for that and it'll easily hold those two back here. All right, so before we go inside of this beautiful coach, there's just something else I gotta tell you about the outside. We have an enclosed underbelly and it's actually that the tanks are heated. There are 12 volt heaters on the tanks and the, the whole underbelly is heated. So that Truma Combi that we talked about has one vent that blows hot air into the underbelly. Patrick, you have camped here at Turkey Swamp in early November, and it can certainly drop below freezing here. So that combination of having the heated underbelly by the Truma and the 12 volt tank heaters, I love that feature. Because I f personally feel like if it drops into the lower 20s, I'm good to go, I'm not gonna have any issues. Also the tank sizes. Now a lot of companies will market an off-road trailer, but not actually build an off-road trailer. Tank sizes to me are very indicative of whether a trailer is actually built to boondock. This has a 55 gallon freshwater tank. That's a huge freshwater tank on a 22 foot travel trailer. Uh, my 34 foot toy hauler had the same size freshwater tank. Then black and gray are 35. So those tank sizes really show you that this company is serious about you camping in non-traditional settings where you don't have hookups and you don't have sewer. All right, so I'm ready to show you the inside. It's sort of beauty and the beast. This is this rugged trailer on the outside that's built to go off-road and off-grid, but on, in, on the inside, it's kind of comfortable and very pretty and very nice. So let's go in and take a look. All right, everybody, welcome inside of the Ember Overland 191 MDB. And this beautiful interior was actually designed uh, by our CEO, who's actually the interior designer for all of the units in the Overland series as well. Um, Ashley Bontrager, she did a great job in here making this a really beautiful interior uh, that kind of offsets that rugged exterior. So the first thing you're going to notice is this is a Murphy bed model. And this is a really nice looking Murphy bed. Several people online, I've seen them comment, this is one of the nicest Murphy beds in the industry. It really, really works well. You've got the beautiful Stargazer skylight right here. Over here you have a booth dinette that deploys into a bed. It's very spacious. I'm very comfortable here. We've got those dual paned windows all around, a really deep slide. Then you can already see that this is a really full sized bathroom for a 22 foot travel trailer. The bathroom is awesome. You have double over double bunks. One of those bunks is going to flip up. We have an eight cubic foot, 12 volt Dometic refrigerator. And we have this kind of center galley kitchen. So it's really comfortable. Love the light colors. It's very homey, very relaxing, very peaceful in here. So you can go off grid and get the outside dirty and then come in here and have a really nice comfortable night inside with your family. All right, now that you've got the lay of the land, let's dig into the details here. So this Murphy bed setup, I'm thrilled with. The couch is very comfortable. It's super, super easy to deploy into a bed as well. It really just takes a second. And it's a true king size or RV king size bed. And there you go. Okay, it's that it's that quick and that simple. And we call this the Stargazer Skylight. Last night I fell asleep in this bed and I was literally looking up at the stars. It was absolutely beautiful. So you have the day shade here to get some nice breezes in. There's also more of a night shade or a privacy shade if you want it to be darker. And then it's also really easy to just bring the window in entirely. And of course you don't want to drive away with the window up. And then you just want to fully latch these along the bottom. And you're in travel mode. Love this whole setup here with the Murphy bed and the Stargazer skylight. Also the Furion 12 volt TV. I actually love this. I had this on my last rig. 
I use the soundbar all the time to listen to music. It's actually a really nice soundbar. And we do occasionally watch a movie using it as well. And because it's 12 volt, you can use it anywhere you want. Okay, it's fantastic for, for boondocking. Then over here, you do have this ember glow light, it's sort of a night light. And I do keep that on at night sometimes um, so the kids can find their way around the coach if they're using the bathroom or whatever. You have USB outlets, you have 110 outlets, and again, those are completely inverted. These would work right now and I'm not plugged in. And you have the vents for the Truma Combi. The Truma Combi heats this coach really, really, really nicely. All right, so let's come around and look at the booth dinette. So the booth dinette also very easily will turn into a bed. And there's, it is freestanding. There's no leg under there, which makes it really comfortable. And you have that extra bed in addition to the double over double bunks. Uh, and you have some storage up here in the slide out. I'm still figuring out everything I'm going to put up here. And it's a nice deep slide, so there's a lot of room. There's a lot of storage right here. So I actually may put my duffel bag and my clothes under there when I'm camping with my kids. More 110 outlets here. And you have that composite floor. This is Transcore floor. It's a composite floor. It's the same or similar to what Airstream uses. It doesn't squeak. Now the funny thing was when I first picked up this coach and I came in here and I walked around, it was squeaking like crazy for about 24 hours. Like it has a break in period, but this floor does not squeak. God forbid if you had a leak, it's not a wood floor, so you're not gonna get damage in the floor. So that again is one of the major selling points of this coach. Five-sided composite construction, composite floors. The only wood in this entire RV is the cabinetry. Even the frames for this booth dinette have aluminum inside them. So here we have the galley kitchen. I really like the deep stainless steel sink. You have the two burner gray stone cooktop. A microwave, I could take it or leave it. I wouldn't mind maybe having more storage there. You don't have to get the microwave. In here, you have the tank heaters. Now they've actually moved that button outside now so that a cup doesn't knock it over. But again, you have the tank heaters there for that heated underbelly. And you have nice storage underneath. It's slightly messy. I did my best to clean up for you, Patrick. And the, the construction on the cabinetry is all fantastic. So I'm just kind of figuring out what's gonna go in all of these different drawers. Then we've got the eight cubic foot Dometic refrigerator. So for my family, this is plenty of room to bring along all the food that we wanna bring. Here's the freezer. I don't want your viewers to think that I just eat cinnamon rolls all day. I actually did my own YouTube video uh, using the Omnia stove making cinnamon rolls and I bought a bunch of them because I was worried I was gonna screw it up, okay? So I do have some nice healthier foods there like yogurts and everything. You've got another vent here for the Truma Combi and the main body of the coach, you know, I woke up to 32 degree weather this morning and the coach was really warm and toasty using that Truma Combi. Now here you have the double over double bunks for my kids and got my stuff up there a little bit. My son Max slept here last night. I actually left this here to remind me. He said, Dad, I love that there's USB outlets in the bunks. So there's USB outlets in both of the bunks. And this is gonna flip up to provide storage. Okay, so you have that rear cargo door. It's gonna lock into place. I've got my dog bed here and my podcasting equipment because my dog Maggie sleeps under there. But if you put that up, you could get a kayak in here, you could get folding e-bikes in here, you could get full-size kid bike in here, et cetera, et cetera. And it runs the length of the coach as well. So you could put a really, really long canoe or kayak in here. So I love that feature. Uh, a little bit of storage up top. Got that kind of jam-packed right now. And the solar controller is in the back. The monitor for the solar controller is right here. So again, you have three 190 watt panels. The Dometic air conditioner, okay, we are not plugged into shore power right now. We are operating off solar and the Dometic air conditioner will turn on and run off the solar, but it's cold out, so we don't need that on right now. Um, over here, we have um, this Lippert 
control panel, which you can operate from your cell phone. You can turn the ceiling lights on and off. You have uh, the awning light that goes on and off. There's a step light, which is a really nice feature at night. The accent light is that light we showed you when we first walked in. And there's one in the bathroom. They're kind of those um, night lights. I need to dump my gray tank. Gray tank's about full. Black tank is fine. My freshwater tank is empty because I am not completely dry camping right now. I'm hooked up to water. My battery's fully charged. My awning goes in and out here. My slide goes in and out here. And again, you can hook this up to your smartphone. This is the um, controller for the Truma Combi. I am a big fan of Truma products. They are really intelligently designed. They're impossible to break. They work really, really well. The warranty rate on these is the best in the industry. Okay, so this is the heat. So right now I have it at 50. Patrick commented that he was cold before, so let's turn up the heat for him a little bit. 65, I won't be stingy. Then we could go here to this thermostat. That's the hot water. So I have it on hot. You could go to Eco. Uh, Eco takes a little bit longer to come out or no, it's not as hot. The temperature's not as hot. I like it hot, so I have it set on hot. And then here is where you're gonna determine how you're powering the Truma Combi. So I actually have it on gas right now, but you could go to mix one, which is gas and one element of electricity. Uh, mix two is gas and two elements of electricity. Or you could go purely electric if you don't want to use your propane at all. I will say this to be fair. It takes longer to heat up the coach just using electric. With gas, it is fairly instant. If you just put this on electric and try to heat up your coach, it is going to take a while. Okay? So propane's going to power it incredibly quickly and efficiently. Electric's a bit slower. A mix gives you a little, a little bit of both. So love the Truma Combi. Uh, let's go over and take a look at the bathroom, all right? Now this is a 22 foot, six inch rig with a really, really big bathroom, which is terrific for families. So let's take a look inside. The porcelain toilet. You have nice storage up here. You got the sink here. And there is that night light, it's not that one. There's that night light. So I leave that on at night for the kids. You have a fan, obviously, uh, which is great. You gotta have one in the bathroom. I'm six feet tall. The shower is perfectly fine for me. Also notice we have the shower miser, which is terrific. This is becoming a popular feature right now. So with the shower miser, um, you could turn on your hot water and then basically shut it off here with the shower miser and that lets it get hot so that you're not wasting that initial burst of cold water, which can go for quite some time. Now, if you're dry camping, trying to conserve water and not fill up your tanks, that is a terrific feature. So the water's circulating and heating up, but it's not coming out. And then this blue tube becomes clear. It's very obvious. That means you have hot water. You turn it on here, the hot water comes out. You didn't waste all that water. So the shower miser is a really, really cool feature. This door closes with a little bit of a magnet. Uh, and again, I'm a big guy. I'm six feet tall and I am perfectly comfortable taking a shower here. Got some nice shelving here. The Truma Combi has two heat vents here to heat up the bathroom. It's a good amount of storage right underneath here as well. So a lot of 22 foot rigs are going to have really small bathrooms, okay? Ember wants this to be as residential as possible while still being an off-road rig. And again, these dual pane windows are terrific. And you've got the day shade, the night shade. And I have, I don't know if I have that open up as wide as it goes, but it's pretty close. So I love these dual pane windows. They also make it really quiet in here, having those dual pane windows. And they also help keep the rig warmer. So if you've ever gone to an RV show or to an RV dealership and the slides are out, a lot of you often want to know, well, what does the RV look like when the slides are in? Because you want to be able to get to the refrigerator and you want to be able to get to the bathroom. Now, when this fairly large slide out comes in, you can get to the bathroom and you can get to the refrigerator if you want to make some cinnamon rolls.
All right, so a lot of you that watch uh, Patrick's channel religiously probably saw the video that he did about RV noises. And I did want to mention, I, I am super sensitive to RV noises at night. I don't like RVs that are really, really loud. This RV is really quiet. And initially I was actually quite concerned, to be honest, because here's your bed. The inverter is right under here. The Truma Combi is right under here, okay? The Truma Combi is nearly silent, all right? There's plenty of reviews online about that. And this inverter is not silent, but it doesn't make an annoying sound. It kind of makes just like a more soothing sound, almost like the furnace is on or something like that. It's um, plus or minus $50,000, depending on how you equip it and where you buy it, whether you get max solar, et cetera, et cetera. Now, you need to think about that price though because there are floor plans out there in the RV industry that are very similar, and maybe you could find them for 35,000 and you could walk in and look at that floor plan and look at this floor plan and say, oh, it's, it's similar, but please remember that it just departs after the point of the floor plan and almost everything else is different in here. You have five-sided composite construction, right? That is gonna make the price jump up. You have composite floors, that's gonna make the price jump up. You have an independent suspension. I didn't even mention the steel tube chassis, which is more rugged for off-road use. So just about everything in this is built differently than competing floor plans that are at a lower price point. And it's about durability. It's about longevity. It's about being able to take this thing off-road. And it's about some fun and some style. This has got this Australian-inspired exterior look. You have that exoskeleton with the laser cut logo. You have more laser cut logos here and here. They just put the, you know, they put some love into this coach that I don't see in a lot of other coaches that may have a similar floor plan at a lower price. So just remember there are a lot of invisible things built into this coach. Like you can be standing on this floor right now and not really realize this is a more expensive floor. So Ember is a relatively new company, though the founders have a ton of experience in the RV industry and the whole production team has a ton of experience, uh, but they are adding dealers on a daily basis. I actually see when the dealers get added because I am doing some brand ambassador work with the company. I bought mine at Whitehorse RV and Ember is trying to pick more than trying, they are picking really high quality dealers. In a lot of cases, they are choosing family owned dealers that have excellent reputations for service and, and for quality in their own right. Now you can go to Ember's website and they have a dealer locator. And if there's not a dealer in your immediate area, they are adding them very, very quickly. So at the RVAtlas.com, I recently did two blog posts, one on my first impressions on the rig and one about my first trip in the rig. Because for me, it's all about using it. Uh, I didn't even want to do this video with Patrick until I had camped in the rig several times and really become familiar with it. So if you go to the RVAtlas.com, there's all kinds of really cool pictures. I went to Assateague National Seashore. I had a site right on the ocean. It was an amazing trip. And I was like totally dry camping there, just totally working off the solar as we are right now. And this thing like performed like a beast. So we're in the East Coast, you know, we don't have a lot of BLM land. We don't have a lot of that kind of um, rugged outdoor camping, but we do have a lot of state and national parks with no hookups. So I got to take this dry camping. And I do hope at some point in the future to really, really get it off road. Well, I'm gonna link to that blog post. That way our viewers could watch along. This is Patrick of New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it. We'll see you soon.